Become a doer today and call now. Hey, Battletech League fans, this is Diamond Jimothy with GMSI, our outside dice addiction here, and we're about to go to the tabletop to look at the match between Peter Harden and Tuck Davian. Alright, here we go. Hit location. Seven. Center torso, Pete. That's it. What do you mean that's it? Wait. It's dead. Was I not dead all of them? <laughs> Alright, it's over! Yeah, we did it, baby! <laughs> what are you gonna say about that, Pete? Huh? Not so fast. Well, what do you mean not so fast? I took the center torso oh, I up. The fire you back. know the rules. All attacks are simultaneous. <sighs> yeah. Alright, fine, fine, fine. Go ahead. Roll to see if you hit. You had an ERPPC. ERPPC. There's a hit. Hit. Fine. Now hit location. Hit location. The head! Oh, Box cars, baby! Come That's on, Pete! <sighs> man. So what does that mean? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. There is no winner, man. If I shot you and took you out, and then you shot me and took me out, there's no winner here. This is a tie, man. Ref, come on. Correct. This is a tie. Get the supper. No, no, you just heard the referee. He said this is a tie, Pete. This team. is a tie. No, 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 no. You put that thing you, away. You promised of course, I'll leave it up to you to bring that day. Well, that's if I lost, and the referee just declared it. it's a tie. So here's the thing, Pete. We never discussed what would happen in the event of a tie. We only discussed a win or lose type situation. Okay? Well, I did things your way. I was here, I beat you fair and square, so you got lucky. It's a tie. So here's what we're going to do. we got to have a tie breaker. We're going to do a team game, Pete. It's going to be Team Battlebound versus Team GMSI. Oh, Team Get My Shots In. Hi, Tuck. You're on camera. <laughs> Look, man. The referee declared it's a tie. We can't go forward unless we have a kind of a rubber match. Tie break. You understand? Mm-hmm. Now, if I win, here's the thing. I've had it. You, you promise to leave, you come back. You're going to be my personal assistant, Pete. Oh, your bondsman. Yeah, yeah, basically, I'll even give you a little bond cord, buddy. How do you like that? You're gonna do all my dry cleaning for me. You're gonna take all my appointments for me. You're gonna bleep out any of the videos that I tell you to bleep out. You're gonna do all my editing, man, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be like a mini staycation all, all at one time here at home. That's what's gonna happen. Oh, so I guess I get to raise the stakes. See, I got on the phone with some people and- um, People. Well, here's the deal. If you, if you lose, which it could happen, you saw what happened here. The show is the not fluke? going to be battle bound anymore. It's going to be retirement bound. Oh, Peter oh come on! <laughs> no, you got to be kidding me, man. I ain't agreeing to all this stuff. This is this is yeah, hard. You could go to the retirement home of Dennis in Texas. You could go to the retirement home of Sacramento, California. Like, come on, Rafi. You can... If you don't accept the challenge, you're going to automatically forfeit. And it'll be retirement bound with Peter Harden. How do I get sucked into these things? How does this? My life is a mess. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay. I can't forfeit because then I have to. Who knows where that egg has been besides your pocket? I ain't putting it in my mouth. Fine, Pete. You got a deal. No, no, take that egg out of your hand. Don't shake my hand with that thing in it. Fine. Now, I got a lot of cleanup to do. Get the sucker. Ah, uh, you know what? Challenge has been accepted. I've been playing Battletech for almost a quarter of a century, and I want to bring the tabletop experience to as many people as possible. I want to have a great game with you. I'm Tuck Davian, and we're out on the open road, looking for players with guts to join us and feel the DACA on Battlebound. Are you ready to hang 10 Battletech fans? By sheer serendipity, we received a gracious invitation out to the Golden Coast, where we traveled overnight, non-stop, through the plains of Texas and into the deserts of New Mexico and Arizona to find ourselves in Fontana, California, in an historic collaboration with Battletech International to bring you Battlebound's first game of Alpha Strike. 
after a quick detour to my hometown of Escondido and out to the coast of San Diego's picturesque seaport village, we made the trip to the home of Kyle Roberts, this episode's featured player. brother thank you so much for having us here today it's a great pleasure to be out here in fontana california and thank you so much for having us and, and helping us get out here let's talk a little bit of battle tech let's talk some shop that's what we came here for it's kind of cool because this is the very first time we've ever done an interview in somebody's house so oh, yeah. thank you for for having us into your home well, thanks for uh, coming man. man what got you into battle tech man tell us that story that's got to be a good story because i the viewers will see some of these miniatures in a second and they're hot man i'm telling you but i that's that's what i got here Oh, you know what? It's it's actually it's actually not as cool as, as people think. I wasn't in on the early days of BattleTech. It was uh, I was born in '83, so it was really early mid or it was mid to late '90s where I really started. Like and asked about the time the animated series came up, and my parents bought me those little those little toys that oh, shot yeah. the missiles. Man. Yeah, sure, it was really cool. My brother and I would shoot the missiles and. Uh, like I really was into the Mech Warrior too. Oh, I love. Oh Mech yeah, Warrior yeah. That, that's that's part of what got me hooked. Yeah, I used to. Be, I used to. I used, oh, I love that game, man. But and that's what kind of got me hooked too, right? Into the video games, and then I, I, I really like the board game aspect because it's social. It's sure. It's real. It's like I don't know. I I spend a lot of time on, on digital media, and it's, it's it's sometimes it's good to get you know real interactions and not not that online media is not real, but like face to face. Kind of old school interaction. Sure. There's just something to be said about that that yeah. human interaction. You know, it's mm -hmm. a very human experience. Well, I saw oh. in your in your case over there, you had the original Tuki at Sourcebook. Yeah. I was telling Taylor, I was like, oh man, those are hard to come by. You don't yeah. you don't see too many people selling off those. But have you heard the the new Tuki at Sourcebook that's, that's coming out? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it about it yet. I haven't. I actually haven't seen read. I haven't read all the details about the new Kickstarters. I actually wasn't in that Kickstarter. Well, the neat thing about it is it started off as a backer reward, but the, the whole thing kind of snowballed on them, and they said, you know what, we're not just going to put this out as a PDF. We're going to put this out as a hardcover. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're give you the PDF too, and it's this whole new, you know, uh, Tuki at Sourcebook, and it's got new art. You know, the, the cover art is amazing, and mm -hmm. if you get a chance to look at that, I'll put that on the screen here for you. And I'm I'm really looking forward to that, and that's one of the, another reason why I wanted to do uh, Tuki it tomorrow is I was like well you know what we just got these new minis come yeah, in and I brought yeah, a lot of those yeah. so you'll get to see them firsthand right right and I thought how can we tie this in you know like how can we showcase these new miniatures how can we talk about a product yeah. that's fixing to come out let's play on Tuki it let's do it you know Tuki it yeah. is one of my favorite fights just yes. because there's so much history there and yeah. there's so much minutia that you can go through uh, on each individual battle yeah. and that's that's one of the things I, I like the most about it so I was just talking about the, uh, the the minis you had there in the case, mm. and for you know, for the viewers at home, man, these things are fabulous, man. I'm gonna put them on the screen here. Tell me, what do you, when you when you you, you paint all these guys, right? Yeah, the all, guys all, that we have in the case here. Yeah, all in the case. I showed you the ones in this box. I, I had so I had bought them used, and it's just someone put time and love into it. I right. Mean, I can't strip it, so they're just I keep them just because they're nicely painted. Sure. So I, if I wanted a new one, I just get a new one and paint it myself. I kind of I, I kind of have that because I put time and effort in the painting if I see someone else with time in I'm like, hey, I'll save this. This is a nice paint job, you know. Even like a decent paint job. Yeah, the ones you the ones you saw were all all the ones I saved in there. See I, I have looking. a couple miniatures at home that are like that. I got mm -hmm. them and I looked at them and I'm like that paint job is so unique mm -hmm. that I, I couldn't I could right, not bring right, myself right. To, to strip it. So when you we're looking in that case there, it is it is very heavy on the Comstar. Yes. So I, I would assume that, that Comstar is your favorite faction. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of Toolkit, that's kind of like why. That's one of the main reasons. Yeah. The whole, I, 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 have the, I like the kind of mysticism involved. Yeah. I like the whole idea that we're, we're trying to, even though I know obviously the plot is complicated and uh, Comstar obviously is, has its eccentricities. And, okay, so it, so it kind of tried to conquer the inner sphere eventually. And it's, no, no, never mind that. The whole idea that they kind of had that, that lost tech cache. Sure. Isn't, and the HPG networks like keeping the atmosphere kind of going. I, I, I thought that was really interesting. And then like I don't know where these these comrades where they've been kind of keeping on the download because they're kind of in, they're, they're the uh, uh, you know uh, arbiters of information I guess. And they uh, they just came to the rescue so to speak. And, and I, I guess it was more like they did it in such a tactical way because then and that's just the stage just fucked and they have his atlas. You know he was a tactician and I like that. That story really stood out to me. Uh, that the fact that they had that sort of lost cachet and that they'd come in and challenge the clients on one homeworld like that is kind of interesting. So I, I found that interesting and also the, the fact that they kind of held on to their flagships and their jump ships and their warships kind of like, okay everybody, no, 
Settle down. We've got all the big ships just hold off on your guys' fleets type of deal. Yeah, I really like Pumpstar for those reasons. A lot of different reasons, but... I mean, I, I don't like the whole assassinating and <laughs> sabotaging and... Sure. But in a way, I think it's kind of... I don't know. I think that's interesting. Kind of the, the argument that the ends justify the means kind right. of... I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting point, considering the circumstances you have to consider. And, and I know, because, just because you're such a, a huge 2 fan, uh, they've, uh, they've come up with new maps, uh, two-dimensional maps. Oh. A whole, t a whole entire pack, you know, of just nothing but 2 Cool. And, and Cat Wilder has just knocked him out of the park. Like, later on, I'll show you some of these maps. They're just killer, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're two-dimensional, but at the same time, these are unlike any maps, man, I've ever mm -hmm. seen. In, in 25 years, you had mentioned that you had been uh, you'd been playing since you were in, in uh, junior high, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, so we played we played like classic Battle Tech back right. then. So with that breadth of experience then under your belt, there's got to be at least one or two memories you have where you're like, oh man, you know what? I'll just I'll never forget that <laughs> that that was the coolest thing you know that day, and we it will never happen again. You know, uh, as far as events taken in the game, you know what? I I. I when I think about the games, I really think about, I have like a memory about it. It's like a good feeling memory, you know, like, yeah, I had a good, I had a good feeling that day. That's kind of like what I get when I think about those days. As far as like events happening, it's just, it's just the hilarious things. I, I had like my super OP, just get headshotted by a Gauss rifle type sure. of deal. It's like, sure. what is this type of deal, you know? And then uh, I had my, uh, uh, what was it, my, auto, my AC-20 explode like two times in a row on one of my sins, <laughs> but like, I, it's still things like that that make it fun, and or maybe you've, we, we played with the wrong rules once. What was it? Uh, I forget the rules we played wrong with, but it was a lot of fun because we were doing it. Was, we were like it was it was just learning experience, but it was one of those learning experiences like where you you know you're going all over the place, sure, not knowing what you're doing, and it's it's fun when you're that when you know junior high high school you, the, the full rule sets are you know they're intimidating. You're not you're not even reading books how big at that age, right? You know, really. <laughs> so it's uh, you know it's, it's a lot of math. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. Don't mind the math. I think it's. I think the people who do like BattleTech, classic BattleTech, they enjoy the, uh, the technical aspect. Oh sure. The uh, very, uh, I want to say complicated, but the very detailed and um, uh, descriptive aspect of it. I think a lot of the faster paced, you know, full training people now they're they're different generations. Of people, sure. You know? So. You know, what, what do you think that this game is going? Is it going to hit that peak again like we yeah. had in the mid-90s? Or yeah. is it just going to get kind of close to that? Should mm -hmm. we be happy with that? I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. It's hard for me not to be pessimistic. Just because, like, the, the fine local game shops are kind of going uh, going extinct, so to speak. But, like, I think the Kickstarter, from what I've seen, especially the models and the, the rules that, and, the, and the, just the beautiful layouts and the editing, like, it's, it's a perfect... Uh, reintroduction, like it's the perfect product to get it going again. Well, I mean, it did hit 2.5 million yeah. in 30 days. Yes, <laughs> some kind of right. right, and that's it. That's that's it. To, to me that that things like that are very encouraging. If anything would work, I think they did the right thing, and and I think it would definitely um, appeal to the people that market that are like this market that as I should say. And I think um, the maps, uh, like you said, when they're reworked like that, they look fresher. I think people would be a little bit more like open to it. Everybody can be like, oh hell, this is, this is, this is a cool game, you know, I want to play this game. So It seems like the past 10 years or so, like maybe it's just the technology or whatnot, but it seems like we've got a lot of, a lot of better reworking of the artwork. Oh yeah, right. Uh, you got guys like Bishop Steiner, Anthony Scroggins, I don't know if you've seen the new uh, Urban Mech, but yeah, we just we just got those minis. Yes, yes. And uh, like yeah, he started out as a fan, actually, uh, Bishop Steiner did, and he was doing the art, and he's just, you know, he's just killer, he's great at it. Yeah. And, uh, they got in there, you know, living the dream there. <laughs> yeah, it seems got, like got in. Yeah. Uh, as I understand it, you will be playing the guards tomorrow. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Congrats. So, how do you feel like you've seen the forces? You've you've, you've seen how, how it goes. And I know you don't have a lot of experience with Alpha Strike, but mm -hmm. just just having seen the forces and knowing what goes into it, what do you think your chances are tomorrow <laughs> to 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 change history? Because uh, in, in this particular battle. Uh, the the wolves win it mm -hmm, uh, historically. Mm -hmm. The the guards have to retreat. Mm -hmm. And ask anybody. I'm all about changing history. Mm -hmm. So if I can change it, you know, like obviously I can change the canon. But I, I I like having games where the outcome is different than the historical outcome. Of course, outcome. that's the whole point of the game. So so how do you how do you think you'll fare? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's I, I have to take a closer look at the the, off, or the the wolves. I know. I mean, it's just it's because I don't have enough experience in Alpha Strike facing Interstellar versus Clan to really. Come up with a really good assessment, but as far as how I think it's gonna go, I, I, I pretty much know that you know the good guys win. That's, that's, that's you know. no, I'm Overall, kidding. The, com right? the calm guys come to save. You know they 
they, they come to save the inner sphere from uh, the invading clans and stop them in their turning sense. That's how it goes, so somehow it gets that way now. If the wolves won this one, I start to fine. Could have gone either way in many battles. But. Right, and, and it's good because you guys will have a, a little bit of an advantage tomorrow. Uh, the type of scenario is, is a hold the line, so mm. I gave the clans 75 points for every 100 that the guards got. Okay. So they're running at about 75% of, of what you have. Mm -hmm. And I got it just that close to like bang on, and I was, I was pretty happy with that. And I know a lot of the folks on the, the uh, Alpha Strike uh, Facebook group, which which we contacted, thought, well, unless there's some kind of objective somewhere or something like that, mm -hmm. that it's going to be a turkey shoot and there's not going to be really, really, it's basically just show up and kick each other in the shins, mm -hmm. see who falls over first, and yeah. whoever falls over first is a loser. Yeah, yeah. And so we added those objectives in there, and uh, I think that's really going to gonna create an interesting uh, question for the Wolves. Do they want to get their guys off the map and thereby get the extra points mm -hmm. for that, or do they want to keep their dudes on the table shooting the guards, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and see how see how that fares for them? So I'll be I'll be real interested to see what choices they make. I'll probably yeah. be on the wolf side yeah. if I'm being honest with you. Right, I'm excited because there's going to be a lot of people at the game, and yeah. so so it's not going to be just about like, well, I win the game. It's kind of like me and my two buddies. It's supposed to be kind of exciting because I have my little. Force too, but it's again like I said, social. And in this case, we'll have a few per team, which is nice. Sure. So you get to not only do you have to negotiate with the other side, but you have to like, hey, hey, buddy, what are you know. But there is a place down the road here in Colton. It's called uh, Gamers Haven, and it's something a little different because it's a club, pretty much. Well, they have this little, this little place. It's a nice little place where they have uh, they have this beautiful uh, um, RPG table. Mm -hmm. they have some uh, uh, tables in, a, in, a, in like a garage out back. Not garage, but like a. They have a door in a beautiful room, and it's a small spot. But what they do is you, you just pay a monthly uh, due, and then you get to go when you want, and you nice. get the game with who you want. And so, anyways, I want to give a shout out to them, and and also that model, thinking, hey, maybe there are groups near me that meet up, maybe at a, uh, a local community center, and the in, in the OC they meet up at a local um, place. I think it's actually a, a church that rents out. It's not rents it out, but opens up its hall for a whole. Everybody just comes to the games. It's, it's amazing. All right, brother. Well, I sure am looking forward to seeing you on the battlefield tomorrow, man. It's going to be a great game. Looking forward to it, man. It's going to be very exciting. We needed it. You needed a game. You need a game in <laughs> now. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Anyway, I mean, that'll, that'll do it for now. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And just remember, don't, don't call us. We'll call you. Is he out of your shot? Taylor, all these guys have sucked so far. This interview is blown, man. Yeah. You need to find a third man, and all the people that came in today so far are just... I didn't want to call them, but I know a guy. You know... Wow, okay, this always winds up good. What do you mean you know a guy? As always, I know a guy. You know I... a... Wait, 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 wait. You know a guy that plays Battletech, but I don't know him? Yeah, there's a lot of people you don't know, Tuck. Okay, I suppose that's a, a good point. All right. You can call him more of a underground guy, if you will. Underground, huh? So he knows the tricks of the trade, is what you're trying to tell me. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. How about we go to lunch? Well, we're at lunch. Call your guy. Tell him where to meet us. You know, we'll come back here. We'll, we'll see what's going on. Sure. I mean, I've already called him, but yeah. Wait, you called him already? Yeah. When were you going to tell me this? Right now. Let's see. Yep. On the 20th of May, 3052, the forces of Comstar's army, the Comguards, went to war with the invading clans on the agricultural world of Tukiyid in a clash of metal versus metal to decide the fate of the Inner Sphere. Led by Comstar Precentor Marshal Anastasius Fote, the Comguards prepared for a battle they knew would be unlike any other, and were prepared to lay everything at the altar of sacrifice to stop the clan war machine. Fote knew the wolves were by and large the bigger threat, and as such, he committed some of his best troops to the cities of Burzo and Scupo in order to fend them off. Within the invading clans, Clan Smoke Jaguar and Nova Cat were eager to begin the ritual of bidding and win the honor of being first to make planet fall, hoping to make up for their recent egregious loss on Kirita Capital World Luthien. 
Clan Wolf wisely accepted the last drop slot on the planet as the Crusader clans conspired against them, looking to insult the Warden Wolves by having them arrive last to take on the leftover targets that were seen as smaller and therefore less glorious. The Crusaders reasoned that the battle would be all but over and done with by the time the Wolves made planet fall, leaving them to scavenge for whatever, if any, scraps of honor or glory that may be left after what would surely be an overwhelming victory for the clans and their ethos. Five days post-drop, on the 6th of May, 3052, the Wolves made planet fall completely unopposed, 40 kilometers away from both of their targets. Their late start had allowed them to make vital changes to their battle plans and not be saddled with dangerously underbid force compositions. Clan Wolf bid Alpha, Beta, Delta, Epsilon, and Gamma galaxies, satisfied to let the other clans take the brunt of the Comguard forces. Khan Natasha Kerensky and Bondsman Phelan Kell provided indispensable experience and advice on Intersphere tactics, causing the Wolves to temporarily do away with the sacred clan tradition of Zelbriggan, as well as configure their Omnimechs with a large slant toward energy weapons to avoid the supply issues Clan Novacat had experienced. All right, Battletech fans, let's fire up the battle computer and have a look at our game by the numbers. Accessing. Accessing.
Each side scores five points for each destroyed mech. The wolves earn an additional two points for each mech that exits the battlefield. We polled the Battletech International Facebook group and asked, Who you got? to see who the community thought was more likely to win the fight. In one of the most lopsided polls yet on Battlebound, the voters voted with their hearts for their favorite clan, while the commenters were certain that the Comguards would achieve an overwhelming victory against the Wolves, citing their distinct numerical and point value advantages. Two groups of would-be mortal enemies came to blows in a clash of ethos versus egos on the much-maligned, oft-forgotten agricultural world of Tukiyid on the 6th of May, 3052. For the Calm Guards, everything was on the line. Despite being a rather fresh force of barely green pilots, despite the inescapable fact that the fate of the Inner Sphere hung low in the balance, the Guards pressed forward, ready to do whatever was necessary to fend off their attackers. For Clan Wolf, the battle was to be a triumph of their beliefs, their acumen, and their very way of life. To them, Tukiyid was a challenge thrown down by a desperate enemy. Their honor demanded they accept, and their Ilkhan demanded they win. While Adept Jeremiah Rose ordered his pilots to follow his lead on the outskirts of Target City Scupo, the guards under his third unit pressed up through the city toward the skirmish line via the northernmost side of the battlefield, looking to draw the incoming wolves westward toward the ruins of the fuel depot just outside the city limits. The plan seemed to start out well as the Wolves countered their move by sending their second strongest star up through the battlefield's northeast passage. With the ritual of Zelbrigan having been suspended, the Wolves of the second star were looking to position themselves alongside their command star in a pincer maneuver, hoping to assault the guards from multiple attack vectors. The guard's second unit continued the actions of the third and pushed up toward the fuel depot. They understood that the depot was likely to be the bloodiest soil of the day, and as such, they sent some of their heaviest, most powerful battle mechs in to keep it from falling to the wolves. They made a break for the depot's foundation, looking to use the ruins for defilade, and potentially goad the approaching wolves into maneuvers of frustration as they attempted to put the guards under their guns, while the wolf support star carried their elemental battle armor squads forward, where they hoped to engage in anti-mech maneuvers.
The initiative was still with the wolves, and approximately one minute into the engagement, Jeremiah Rose continued to lead the Calm Guard push toward the skirmish line. Looking to keep the battlefield's southernmost region to themselves, they moved under the cover of the heavy woods directly in front of them, as Rose's unit looked to head the wolves' attack strategy off at the pass, attempting to sneak in behind one of their dual attack vectors and catch them unawares while they focused on the larger Calm Guard mechs to the north. Moving to distract the wolves from this ploy, the second guard unit continued their northeast push, looking to draw the wolves further away from Rose's unit as it descended upon them. By keeping close to the defilade they had previously used for cover, their strategy was to only give the wolves an attack vector when it was too late to change their strategies if Rose could complete his ambush attempt. The eager wolves wanted nothing more than to shoot from the hip, and both their command star and secondary star moved toward their newly chosen enemies in one fluid motion, looking to cut down the line of guards near the fuel depot and hoping to punish them for the perceived cowardice of their evasive maneuvers. The wolf support star blew past the walls of the fuel depot to push back the advancing third comm guard unit, looking to buy time for their brethren to decimate the enemy forces on the other side of the wall uninterrupted. It was not to be, however, as the Calm Guards began to lay down a concentrated stream of hate on the wolves, destroying the riding battle armor squads and a wolf hellbringer, while only suffering the loss of an exterminator themselves. Despite this minor setback, the wolves knew they had an opportunity to beat back the guards on the north side of the fuel depot as they caught wind of Rose's approach. They knew full well he was cut off from his fellows on the battlefield's southwest side, and the wolves moved to keep Rose's force from firing to full effect. The wolves' secondary star joined their fellows from the command star in a joint effort to bottleneck the battle mechs of the second guard's unit and turn the fuel depot's north side into their own personal Hogan's Alley. But the wily calm guard mech warriors of the second unit refused to back down. They positioned themselves in advantageous firing positions inside Scupo or near a dense patch of woods, successfully keeping a good deal of the wolves from being able to bring the full brunt of their firepower to the forefront. While the wolves were responding to this change of strategies, the comm guards of the third unit moved up to support Rose's push to aid their fellows on the other side of the depot. The wolves found themselves jimmy-jacked as the shots began to fly between them and the guards. The wolves did their level best to lay into the guards they had tried to trap, hoping to make their way past their enemy and into Scupo to claim their objective. Despite the command star's Daishi laying down a fierce line of fire and removing a calm guard warhammer, the guards parlayed their use of cover and support tactics into a devastating fusillade that saw twice the amount of wolf mechs laid low as the guards lost, leaving the writing on the wall for the wolves that their scare tactics would no longer cut the mustard and that the guards would fight to the last. With half their forces in tatters and their inability to inflict similar losses on their enemy, the wolves needed a miracle just to achieve the possibility of a comeback. With the initiative having swung back toward the comm guards, the likelihood seemed smaller and smaller with each passing second. The wolves command star blew past the walls of the fuel depot in a daredevil drive to push back at the guards with all their might, but the guards knew the time to keep the pressure on was now. Rose's unit barreled toward the wolves, some of their most powerful battle mechs finally being able to bring their weapons to bear as they hoped to make the ruined fuel depot the location of the wolves' final play. Bolstered by Rose's defiance, the pilots that had survived the wolves' attempt on their lives brought their battle mechs to positions in and around the depot to allow for no escape. 
both the guards and the wolves threw everything they had into their respective pushes, but it was the posse of guards who would ultimately come to collect as the bills came due for the wolves, leaving their hopes of a successful final drive on the ground along with the pieces of their destroyed comrades, allowing them only one last opportunity for a final stalwart act of temerity. Thus began the Showcase Showdown. With only a remnant of the Command Star left to stare down the guards, the wolves began a backwards descent that signaled what would be the end of their drive. The Calm Guards, emboldened by the fantastic success of their resistance against the wolves, pressed grimly forward, setting their minds to do what must be done. They laid down a blistering combined cannonade that sent the remaining wolves reeling, blasting holes in their remaining mechs and leaving the battlefield littered with the remains of what once stood so confidently before. In a final stand of contempt, the wolves laid into Rose's shootist, sending the 70-ton brawler crashing to the dirt for the final time, leaving a massive X burned across its torso from their last fearsome salvo and its pilot dispossessed. And this brings us to the portion of the show we like to call After the Action. All right, Battletech fans, it's after the action time. You know how we do, you know how it is. We're out here in Fontana, California. This is the furthest distance we've traveled so far on Battlebound. I gotta say, this has been a great experience so far. We had a great game today. It was Alpha Strike, our first game of Alpha Strike here on the channel. And I want to take our featured players here and just have a little bit of a round table. We'll start with you, Jules. What did you think about the game? Um, I actually enjoyed it, you know, um, I usually just play the standard classic battle tech, so yeah. Alpha Strike was something new for me completely. Um, pretty easy to catch on with it and figure it out. Game went a lot faster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Quick we did. Yeah, um, for me, the, a game like that, from what I'm used to, would last almost the whole night. Yeah, sure. At least. I think you need exper really experienced players to get it done in one night <laughs> in Classic. I think yeah. if it were me, I'd have to do it over like two sessions Yeah. to get to get that done. Did, did you like Alpha Strike? Oh yeah, I did, I did. It was, it, it's a different take on it, and um, it's enjoyable. Especially for, for larger battles. Yeah, you can get a, you can get a, get a larger battle done a lot faster. What do you think about the game, brother? Um, I had fun with it today. It was my third time playing Alpha Strike. I'm used to more of the classical, but it was, I feel like it was a little bit outnumbered, but that's just clan versus right. very normal. So I feel like some dice rolls could have affected a lot more as well. I definitely missed a few key shots I was looking for there. I gotta be honest, but I, one of the things I was happiest with was rolling that 12 on the Warhammer, just killing it outright <laughs> with a sure. dire wolf. It was Ooh. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I dug that. I, I, a lot of folks on the uh, the forums that we were talking about uh, had said, oh, you know, Comstar easily wins this, and da 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 And I was just like, well, I went by the book, you know, that I got here, and the uh, whole the line scenario gave it as uh, 75 to the clans for every 100 that the Inner Sphere got. And so I tried to go that way. I mean, historically, the, the Inner Sphere lost uh, at, in this city in Scupo, but the, uh, the uh, Natasha Kerensky and, and her, her guys were coming around the other end as all this was happening, and they had to bug out before they got killed. So I, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied that we got uh, Jeremiah Rose dead. That's what happened. We're not dead, but you know we killed his mech, which is, is what happened. This so, hurt. Yeah, yeah. It hurts my head. <laughs> all right, brother. What do you what do you got to say about it, Kyle? Uh, you know it was pretty fun. I you know it was such a long time. It's kind of hard not to compare it to. It's like a it's, it's just a breath of fresh air to be able to play again. You know, and, uh, it, I like how quick it moved. That was that was a lot of fun. 
you know, like uh, sometimes if for certain people, you know, a belt that can drag out to them. And this is really quick, it's not fun. It's a cool table and worked out really well. I'm really happy. Sweet. Pretty fun. And of course, we got in the house Battletech International's own Patrick Saul right here repping the BTI. What do you got to say about it, my brother? First, if you want to know, I'm actually a character in the book made, uh, written by Mr. Blaine Lee Pardo. So, if you want to read about me in the storyline, get this book. Shameless self plug! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the game's game was actually very cool. Um, I played the Apple Strike numerous times, even when it first came out, like where there's like a lot of bugs. But the one thing I love about Apple Strike is, um, as a collector like me, I got like a lot of battle necks that are built, you know, and it's a shame that you can't like fight an entire battalion versus battalion sure, yeah. on somebody because it's going to take forever. Right. But you go to Alpha, you switch to Alpha Strike. Yes, it's more simplistic, but that's the best part. So now I can feel an entire battalion sure. against another battalion and have duke it out uh, with, uh, with a fellow mech warrior. And at best, it'll be all day. Because if I tried a battalion battalion with real classic Battletech, I'm fairly certain I'm probably not going to finish that till probably two weeks later or right. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Multiple <laughs> sessions, yeah. But that's how it goes because I mean some of the conventions that uh, I've seen people do from even Gen Con when they do like multiple scene scenarios it takes just that much forever you switch to Alpha Strike holy smokes like think about it when you guys do like the Battle of Tukid yeah. coming up on the 27th hey um, <laughs> <laughs> what it calls now you can do like entire clan trineries versus com you know com guard formations and your game's not gonna take forever making your significant other happy. <laughs> <laughs> so as, speaking strictly as an observer, I know you got a few turns in there, but most of the time you were, you were an observer. So what did you think about the, the composition overall of, of each force and, and you know the objectives and all that stuff? Do you feel like it was all right or could it have been? It was an even fight and I actually do like the objective. It was a breakthrough scenario, which made sense. Um, point system wise, it was very balanced. In the end, um, you have to leave it to chance. That's what die rolls are for. Yeah. So sometimes it sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. You know? It's like our, our buddy Gene said, you either you either win and that's great, or you go out spectacularly in a blaze of glory and, and that's good too. You know, any day with Battletech is, is better than a day without it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, how do you feel about it? Well, I, go, I like it. I go, I'm still new to the game, so I'm sharpening my teeth, but yeah, I go. Alpha Strike, I feel, is a good way for people to get into the game. Oh, sure. And it's like, a, here's kind of like a, the bare bones, it's like, a, it's like a basic rule so that you can know the mechanics and then like a, you, you, as you gain more experience, you can probably move on to more practical like, like a setup and like a, you won't have to like a, learn as much and you can like be more effective sure. when it comes to that larger game. I also want to talk about some of these minis we got on the table over here, some of these minis that Kyle painted. I gotta thank you for, for handing us those minis. We did bring our own with us, but when yeah. I saw how, how well you had painted those, I thought, oh man, dude, we gotta get this in here. That'll be some real good flavor. You know, I really dig that. So, And, and you know what? You had some great terrain, too. I, I, I usually come prepared. You know, I always bring my stuff just in case, because you never know. You know, I'd rather have and not need than need and not have. But, you know, I showed up, I need very little of my own stuff, and I was like, oh man, that, that's pretty sweet. You know, and you had all this, this foam terrain here. So, so a lot of this battlefield, folks, was made possible by this guy. So, nice. I mean, I, I contributed very little to this. So I got to put this guy over. He did a fantastic job with these trees, the max, the the table, the mat here. Man, it was just all all cherry, man. So very good job. Fun, yeah. Yeah. Fun, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And the clans defeat on this particular scenario, what if scenario, yeah. <laughs> is due to the fact that the game of chance played its role, mm -hmm. and it decided to bless calm guards the victory of die rolls, and. Decide like, nah, Clan will wins too much. Right. The guys nods decide like, no, ignore those guys. <laughs> initiative dice giveth and the shot dice taketh away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're giving enough credit to our blessed Blake in this situation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed have, have, Blake. <laughs> there may be more to do with this than. Oh, yeah. It may, may have been pulling the puppet strings there. Kind of There are those who say it may. That's all I can say. <laughs> I do have one thing. Uh, we actually have a couple of birthdays in the house. That is true. Right? Um, so, I don't know if you guys saw some of the dice that I was rolling with. Got them in my back pocket here, so nice. Let's wait. 
Oh, goody. Woo! Yeah, baby! So, we brought the hand sanitizer. Home. These are our home dice. These are dice addiction oh, from Tulsa. You. Leave we a little bit of Tulsa here, here with you. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, your yeah, birthday. Yeah. So, happy birthday, gentlemen. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. And that's nice. Dice Addiction's uh, mascot, his name is Tank the Dragon. Yep. Oh, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm rolling this bad boy. I'm yes. <laughs> that's right. Sure. It's happening. <laughs> Best know it. <laughs> All right, Battletech fans, that concludes this month's episode of Battlebound. Remember, folks, if you like what you've seen so far, please hit that subscribe bell down there and turn on all notifications so you can tell exactly where Battlebound's going to be next. Please, folks, help us make our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Rate the video and comment on the video and tell us what your favorite part of today's episode was. We've had a great time today out here in Fontana, California with our featured players, and we are sure looking forward to seeing you next time out on the space lanes on Battlebound! Battlebound! territories in 87 and I was part of the big clan invasion in 92 that was a lot of fun and I used to shoot dice with Max Stackpole out in the back alley yeah no the uh, the explosion thing with the engines don't say that here yep all here baby. you're telling me the whole idea of Stackpole came from this guy yeah they should call it marketing you got it dude you drank all my cactus cooler what the it was good it was just sitting here I figured it was like free samples or something no there's not even, there's barely a drop! You, you just drank all of you know how much soda this was? Well, you're gonna have to go to the bathroom. How do puppets even go to the bathroom? You're well, gonna have you, to... You don't wanna know. No, I guess, I guess I don't. Um... I... <sighs> really, Taylor, this is, this is, this is where we're at. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's legit, I promise. Look, I've logged more miles on a dice pad than you got on your car, pal. I... <sighs> you won't be sorry. Oh, Taylor, you... You vouch for him. I told you, I knew a guy, he's legit. When have I let you down? <sighs> All right, I guess that's a fair point. All right, Marvin, you got yourself a deal. All right! All right, oh. well, we'll start training. We'll start training here real soon. You're gonna have to teach me whatever Michael Stackpole taught you, because I'm gonna need all the tricks, man. You Everybody got it, buddy. Fist bump it. All right, I need All right. some Alka-Seltzer now. <laughs> all right, bye, guys. Hey, See you on the battlefield.